Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. Okay, so uh, you were, uh, I think you're on the fourth episode of Shooting It Raw. Mm-hmm. And we're just going to check in with you because I think this is a really good time to check in with you. Um, it is. It's, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, oh, really? So, well, I, I think so. <laughs> there's a vaccine. <laughs> there's a vaccine on the horizon, although I, uh, oh, you're so I can't really get it right now. You're so naive. Um, no. Okay, so uh, the first photo I'd like to jump into uh, because, uh, yeah, it's, it's so good. Uh, wait, first of all, please introduce yourself and, and give your professional title and, uh, and maybe uh, introduce who you are to the world at large. Uh, my name is Yael Elfassi. I go by Dr. E uh, in my office. I'm a pediatrician, uh, mom of two kids, live in Savannah, Georgia, and like to have, like to do a lot of stuff and explore and have adventures and stuff. Mm, Very well vague. Said. Mm. Well said. <laughs> um, yes. So, how, and I'm your sister. Oh right, right. I was going to ask you how long right. have you known the host, the dashing, hilarious um, host <laughs> of Shooting It Raw. Handsome. You forgot handsome. Uh, really? Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're looking out for me. You're looking out for me. Okay, so the first photo, uh, let me describe it. You're seated on a bed that I have slept on about uh, almost a year now. Holy jumping Jesus. So when COVID first started, uh, I took uh, Cadence, my daughter Cadence, on a flight and said, Hey, Ed, we're landing tomorrow. We're leaving. Bye. And then mm-hmm. we flew from Hong Kong, landed in uh, in Savannah, Georgia, and you picked us up, and it was such a treat. And we you, we stayed in that in this room. And so, just to describe, uh, at the very top of the image, where you can just barely see the hint of it, is the the blurred fan blade of a of a ceiling fan, and you could see the two sort of chains with the with the the switches. And then behind that is a very whimsical. A, a most whimsical room, a whimsical wall of uh, yellow with like white zigzag patterns going across. Chevron, chevron uh, pattern. Oh, oh, very nice. Thank you. Um, did you chev the Ron? Who made that? I, I did chev the Ron. That was uh, Charlie's, my daughter's bedroom when, when we first moved into this house. So oh, okay. yes, I did the chevron pattern in gray and yellow. Right. It's very nice. Uh, in the middle of the, of the photograph, so is your head smack dab in the middle with your with your head tilted, we'll say, to 11 o'clock, with your forehead at 11 o'clock. You're looking right at the camera. You've done a selfie, and you're seated on a bed with the mm-hmm. blankets and pillows all a tussle. And it's like a, chi- it's, it's like a it's, I guess it's like a large child's bed. And you're seated cross-legged, and you're holding up what looks like a plate of pizza. And mm-hmm. you're kind of going like, Mgh. you're wearing a, a, a bright red, a bright red T-shirt with black, I guess those are leggings. And then you've got boots on the carpeted floor, gray carpeted floor. And there's a little drum kit, a cute little kid's drum kit on the left with like a purple and yeah. everything. So now that I've described the image, um, why why do you think I would I'd choose? And why, by the way, the name of this uh, photograph, do you remember what, what we called it? Uh, Rona, Casa Rona, I think. Shea Casa Rona. Rona. Shea, Shea Rona. Rona. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Although I think, I think a more appropriate title is All By Myself. Oh, Because that's how I on. felt. <laughs> <laughs> what a wanker. That is how I felt. <laughs> so to kind of, uh, th- what prompted this picture was, um, earlier that day, I had been tested for coronavirus because I had a little tickle in my throat, and um, I, it was a it was a little funny moment. You know, I'm in, I'm in my office, and I was like, "Well, before I start my work day, let me put down my stuff and go get tested." I was just tested the week before, like six days before, and I was negative, but I couldn't ignore the tickle in my throat. And as a joke, I was telling my colleague that I would just swab myself so I could learn how to do the rapid antigen test that we had just received fresh off the presses at the office. 
And we were joking around and I was joking about how funny this was and how it's like our pregnancy test with one line or two lines. And as I'm reading the instructions, if one line is negative or two lines is negative, it pops up and I am positive for coronavirus. Boom. So, you know, in that moment, you're just like, oh, holy shit. <laughs> uh, you just don't, you know, like the, just the, all these thoughts go through your head of, holy shit, I'm, holy shit, I'm positive. And then who did I see? And then I just saw my parents the night before. So that was like, oh crap. Now, now what does this mean? Do they have coronavirus? Um, you know, are they going to die? Am I responsible for their death? It's just like a lot. It's a big, it's a, it's very emotional. Yeah, um, yeah. so yeah, uh, pretty much in the parking lot at work, had a little breakdown and cried about what that would mean. And then went to go pick up the kids cause they're in pod school and took them home. And so I pretty much masked up right away. And this picture was once, uh, Brad came home, my husband came home, he was feeding the kids dinner and I was secluded by myself in that room with the idea that the whole week I was going to be by myself in this room with a really, really loud Chevron background. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, so just like that picture of like, I'm all alone. (laughs) So so that's what prompted that picture. Well, I uh, know, I know. No, no, look. So just to, to, to kind of expand the portrait, right? Like you're a pediatrician in Savannah and mm-hmm. you have, by your own uh, admission to me was, you know, I've been following all the protocols, best practices. I've been doing my best. I am the uptight one around all my friends and everything. And then, and then you essentially discover that within your, your, your immediate circle, you're the one who, who got, got I'm positive. I'm the dirty whore. Uh, hey, hey, watch your language. This is a podcast for children. I'm sorry. Just put the E. Just put the E next to it. <laughs> I mean, but really, it's like there's a stigma to having coronavirus. First of all, nobody talks about it. Wow. Nobody wants to say that they've had it. Nobody wants to say that they've been exposed. I think you're right. Uh, and then, yeah. And then when you do, and I know I'm right because, so, so I'll, I'll get there, but when when you do end up getting it, um, it's very hush hush. Like you just don't want to tell anybody you have it. And then you already, and then you have to make the phone calls of shame of you it's have to call crazy. every person <laughs> that you've been in contact with in the last five days and tell them that you have it and that, you know, all, you just feel awful. You're like, I'm so sorry. And, um, I single handedly ruined Hanukkah for one family. I, stopped a trip for another family um you know everybody has to shut down yeah. and you just you really do feel you feel dirty <laughs> you're uh. just like i'm so sorry but um i decided to kind of I, I was tired of the stigma and i was saying you know we should share so that people sure. know because really well because everyone feels like it's so far away i'm not going to get coronavirus every i don't even know somebody who really has it like I know a few people because I'm in the healthcare and um, field, but not I don't really know very many friends who've had it. And so I posted on Facebook my kind of how it happened and how I was exposed and how quickly and how vague the symptoms were and how I and how I um, exposed my parents to it. And within ten minutes, I had three different people contact me saying, "That's my exact story. That's wow. exactly how I had it, or I have it right now." And this is people that I'm like, oh, wow, you, you're you right next to me. You're you're just down the street or you're just, you know, in the same neighborhood or something. Huh. So it's it's everywhere. Just people aren't talking about it. Right. Yeah. Once you told me, I, I, met, I shared it with a few people that I know. And um, then all of a sudden I had three people say, yeah, you know, I had it like two months ago. And, and you're right. There is this weird stigma that somehow it's 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 blaming the victim in a way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, and okay. you, you automatically go through it. You're automatically like, who gave it to me? Where did I go? Who had it? You know, you, you want to find the source and sometimes you can't find the source. Right. So, so, so okay, let's put it up on the wall. Coronavirus on the left. 
genital warts on the right. Which one was worse? <laughs> I've never had genital warts. Oh, look, you're but still... I would imagine. St- <laughs> I would imagine genital warts is for the, worse. for the stigma. Really? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Listen. For the okay. stigma, yes. <laughs> are, are you really? Are you really going to be the last one to find out? Now, if you said chlamydia, oh, you know, maybe. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I think I would prefer to have chlamydia over over COVID at this point. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, me. Well, I. I was, and I think you're right because I remember talking to you. Uh, basically, as soon as very soon after you found out, and yeah, it was your. But I had COVID. <laughs> yeah, COVID, you had the not scene. chlamydia. Yeah, no, you had COVID. Yes. <laughs> Let's make it clear. Let, let's just make that clear, everyone. <laughs> yes. But, but yeah, so it's just like, it, and it's true that I could, to- I could totally see what you mean by this, this shame thing. And if anything, what's messed up is that I know what you're like. I wouldn't call you OCD at all, but you're a responsible pediatrician. You know what to do. And you, mm-hmm. you know, I think like the fact that you're in, in Georgia, which is, you know, when I tell all the people out here in Hong Kong, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, my sister uh, lives in the U.S. They're like, oh, really? I'm like, yeah, yeah, wow, that's pretty crazy. I'm like, yeah, it is. Uh, where does she live? I'm like, oh, Georgia. And everybody looks at me like, <gasps> what? Yeah. Like, of all the states. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are in the nu- we are in the news right now, so you know, um, yeah. It's just it is it is kind of I did, we did not go to any restaurants. We never ate indoors. My only high risk factor was was going to the gym and seeing patients, but I always wore my PPE. So yeah, it's just you can get it anywhere. Well, that's the thing. That, that's another thing. Like uh, I was listening to this one person talking about it and. He was saying that, you know, uh, he was a flight attendant, uh, or he is a flight attendant. And he was saying that, you know, I have to, at some point, just sort of select my four things that I'm going to do. Like he's on a podcast, like he mm-hmm. talks about on some podcast. And he's just like, I have to, you know, I have to select the four things I'm going to do, because if not, you know, I'm allowed to clean four things, for example, in the hotel room, right? If not, I'm just going to go bonkers, just doing, you know, yeah. uh, just go crazy. Yeah. And in your case, here's what I think when we had this discussion, it's like it's hard to wrap our minds around things that are extremely big, like the size of the sun, you know, or the distance from here to the next galaxy, you know, like huge distances are just really hard to understand. Mm-hmm. But equally, things that are exceedingly small, like a virus and that yeah. it's it could it could totally be in in a billion different places that how can you how can you manage everything so so yeah you're just unlucky you just got it yeah i just got it and really unlucky because today people are getting vaccinated at the hospital for covid and uh and now i don't really need it for the next three months because i'm making my own antibodies nice (laughs) so so close okay so close to the end (laughs) it's part of your story it's yeah, part of your yeah. story. And uh, and for now, I still can't smell. So hopefully that comes back. Okay, yeah. So let's talk about that. Okay, so so the anosmia. So you can't smell. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the nope. scale of 1 to 10, uh, with, uh, with 1 being zero smell and 10 being just full normal. Like, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. So what? where would you say your is, – is, is it really complete and total loss? Yeah, I'm at a, I would say if, uh, 10 is completely normal, I'm at about a one or a two. Wow. Yeah, I got nothing. Wow. I can, I can maybe, maybe if I stick my head in the coffee grounds, I can smell a slight whiff, but that's about it. Wow. So, yeah, it's pretty weird. Okay. It's pretty. And that's the only thing? Uh, uh that slight tickle. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a dry cough, but that went away. Um, I had a little bit of nasal congestion but mm. that went away um so yeah that's the only thing left over at this point so so where does a lazy eye come in <laughs> you're not supposed to say that they can't see me oh you're right oh you're right, right, right. Sorry. so i should describe <laughs> that as well so uh we're not using zoom so i have to go by memory and so my sister uh is very very pretty you're a very very beautiful woman except for whenever you have conversations with people 
you have this eye that just dances. It's like it f- does backflips and stuff. And uh, you know, it's from the chlamydia. It's from the chlamydia. <laughs> right, right. And not to take away from you, not not you know, because but it is distracting. And I think most people are pretty good about uh, not bringing Thanks. attention to it. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you know. it. And, and I think I think it's we live in a strange world where getting COVID, which is a pandemic, which which affects everybody around the world garners more shame than your freakishly lazy eye i mean it's it's freakish i know i know well i hope nobody else has to contract covid and i hope they get their vaccine and i hope that we move forward and uh and kind of get through this so so there's my plug get the vaccine yeah get the fact yeah. wash your hands remember before don't yes. touch your face <laughs> don't touch your face what, what was it was stay clean stay yeah. clean or yeah yeah Let's talk about, for example, I think the feelings of shame, I think, are really important. But, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel, right? That feeling of, I kind of feel that once the, now that the, the vaccination vaccine is kind of getting around, that mm-hmm. there's going to be a sense of uh, elation, of release, of joy to, to just, for people to read it, re, get, get back to, to yeah. normal. Yeah, but we're not there yet. We're not there yet. We're mm. still going to have to mask. We're still going to have to. Um, there's still a lot of studies left to do. We still have to see if people can still be contagious, even though they have created antibodies. Um, so, you know, it's going to take a while to vaccinate um, a large portion of the population. And it's going to take a while to study this vaccine and see how long immunity actually lasts. And if people are going to need to have um like repeat boosters of the vaccine mm. over time. Yeah. So we're definitely, it's just nice to, to have something to look forward to. It's nice to be able to go to work and hopefully have teachers get vaccinated so kids can go back to school. Right. Um, it's just nice to have something to look forward to instead of this just, just every day, you know, no end in sight. And so the anxiety. That, that's, and the anxiety. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's definitely something that's going to, and you know, i Hopefully, hopefully the, the biggest fear in all this is obviously that my, my parents don't get it, uh, or our parents. And then if, if they remain negative, then there are some positives to this, to us getting it is that now everybody will have created some antibodies. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't have to worry about hanging out with them anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, we, I, I we're still going to mask up, but if we do want to go to um, a, a restaurant and sit a little closer to people, we could do that. Mm-hmm. So there are some, there is a little bit of a positivity in all this as well. So sure. looking forward to it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. We'll probably get back to this topic. Mm-hmm. We'll probably get back to it, but let's go, let's move on to the next photo. So is life really a gift? Really? Can you make every second count? That's the whole point of the podcast. So if you like what you've seen and you're inspired, because that really is my mission, then please give it a like, subscribe, and share. Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting.